I'd like to uh, call this first meeting of the new year of the Pitt County Board of Education to order. I appreciate those of you who've chosen to spend your evening here with us and your interest in, in what we're doing here. We, we really are grateful. And for those of you who may be watching at home, we appreciate your interest as well. So I uh, first would like to ask Caroline Doherty to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. Please rise and face the flag as we say the Pledge of Allegiance together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And before we observe the moment of silence, I'd like um, for us all to remember the family of Damani Smith. She was a vibrant fifth grader at Bethel School, 11 years old, and was in, in school in class on December 21st and passed away from a very sudden and tragic um, illness on December 23rd of this year. Like you asked, I ask you to please remember her mother, her father, and her two brothers as they try to cope with this in this world without their precious Damani with them. Please join me in observing a moment of silence. Amen. Thank you. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? No. Yes. I make. Um, I would move that we add approval of the capital projects priority list that was discussed during the board work session as item three, E to the consent <laughs> agenda. Based on discussion during the board work session, the consensus of the board was to prioritize the capital projects as follows. Total capital funding request for $16,098,074 for the following items. A.G. Cox Middle, 1936 wing replacement and 1958 renovation, plus adding six classrooms. Buckle multi-purpose room floor repair. School bus camera schools systems for all buses. Upgrading cameras to the IP for all schools. Farm al fire alarm upgrades to four schools. EBA Cox complete HVAC upgrade. CM Epps new HVAC system upgrade, uh, or actually that's a new system, not an upgrade. Walcott's electrical services upgrade. Walcott's new HVAC system. Welcome electrical service upgrade generators for Grifton, GR Whitfield, JH Rose, and facility services. It's been moved by Melinda that we add the items on the list from the work session and then the interest of time. Okay, not to repeat the entire list. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. Okay, it was moved by Melinda, seconded by Worth. Is there any discussion? I have a discussion. Um, <coughs> I just spoke with Matt and got some more clarity because even though um, we've got this project list to do right now, I feel as though there are other projects that have been on the list years and years before that are not going to make it this time and we don't know when and I don't think that that's right. I, I just don't. I've um, had some some um, projects that I needed done in my district that I've had walkthroughs, I've had discussions with and you know um, that had went on the list back in 2009 and there's been several other projects done in various districts. Um, at the same level that I that my need was in my district, and um, I just don't think that it's right. I just think that you know, money is hard to come by, but I think um, districts and priorities and um, things that have been on the list uh, for years and years should be a priority by now. It shouldn't take me ten years to get 
something major done at one of my schools. Whereas I've got <coughs> other board members that's in these districts that's gotten stuff done, you know, like that. And I just don't think that it's right. But I'm gonna vote for it because, because um, A.G. Cox is a priority. That school is in very bad shape. Not only A.G. Cox, but Fong, I mean Falkland is in very bad shape and needs some work done to it. So I will be voting for it, but I still don't think that it's right, you know, for certain districts to get a little bit of everything and then some of us get nothing. Any further discussion? Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Uh, so we'll now vote on it. All those in favor of amending <coughs> the put adding these items to the consent agenda, raise your right hand. Okay, so that passes. So having added that to the, the consent agenda, um, <coughs> then we will address that. At, then we wait until right. consent agenda time. Okay. Um, so next we have our spotlight, my favorite part of every meeting, the spotlight on teaching and learning. I'll invite our PIO, Jennifer Johnson, to come share great news with us. Yes, thank you. I feel like I have the best job in the room um, mm -hmm. to um, highlight some of our teaching and learning. Um, people here today. So the first people that I would like to bring down today are Hope Middle School, the Quill team, and I will let Jennifer Poplin, their principal, um, let you know a little bit more about their accomplishments, but welcome the Hope um, teacher and Quill team. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, that means and I really think that I have the best job of anyone in the room, so let's clarify that right off the bat. On behalf of the Hope Middle School community, we thank you for the opportunity to come tonight and recognize some of our students for one of many <coughs> accomplishments. You're aware of our participation in North Carolina Association for Scholastic Activities, or NCASA, which is supported and encouraged by Dr. Linker. This organization promotes, promotes <coughs> academic excellence and success of North Carolina students through scholastic competition promoting sportsmanship and teamwork. Middle schools compete in the NCASA Challenge Cup in the 2A or large middle school category. Hope is currently in first place after participating in the Quill. And we are fortunate to have Miss Mary Holloman, who is a sixth grade English language arts teacher at Hope and also the sponsor of our Quill team here tonight. Thank you very much. Um, well, if you're not familiar with the Quill team, it's a writing competition in which teams of four students have to create written products given a prompt from each of four text types. So they either write argumentative, problem solution, narrative, or an informational essay. Um, the regional competitions were held at the school level in October, and the top five schools from each region go on to the state competition. Hope placed third in the East Region, and then we competed at the state competition in Greensboro on December 1st, where we won first place. And um, I have two of the four students that went to the competition with me today, um, Ariana Lee, and this is Ian Brannigan. And Ian has been doing it for the past three years with me. Um, we started three years ago. We've won first place all three years in a row. So um, Ian actually also was the state championship, uh, the state champion in informational writing. He got a 97 out of 100 possible points on his paper. So um, it's kind of nerve-wracking they sit down they get the prompt they have 90 minutes and that's it you have 90 minutes to write and they have to do it on demand and they did a really great job so <coughs> i'm really proud of them they've been working really hard so excellent thank, thank you. you i'll invite mr forrest to come make a presentation Ms. Paulson, I know you are very excited about this. I am. And we are very excited about y'all, too. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Ms. Hallman, I thought you were one of the students. <laughs> You're my favorite. <laughs> but we want to, uh, we just want to, uh, on behalf of the County Board of Education, <laughs> present to your students a little token of our appreciation for their accomplishment. I'm telling you, when you state champions in anything it's a tremendous thing but when you're state champions at your age in writing that is just outstanding out of this world and so we really do appreciate the efforts that you make we appreciate the efforts of your students and we for a little token of our appreciation ian brannigan we're going to give you this medallion 
And if you, if you say it for a hundred years, it'd be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and this certificate, isn't it pretty? Uh, and then, and then uh, also for Ariana, yes. Ariana Lee, there's your medallion, okay, and your certificate. And we're going to give you these yes. two for the other two students. Now, are there parents here? They are not. They're not neither, neither one oh, these parents, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can parents we bring them in? We'd Absolutely. like to get a picture of this coffin. We'd sure. like to get a picture. Absolutely. Come on in. We're very, very Absolutely. appreciative of this family. Yes. Thank you. 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 Thank we, we're very appreciative of the parents allowing us to borrow their children for for this time, and uh, we really do appreciate it. That'd be fine. You look good. Hold up your certificate. Show them your medallion. And let it shine in the light. And look, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what they do with this, Paul. When, when, when they go to school tomorrow, let them write a little story about it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think Benjamin needs to write the story. And our next honorees come from Walcoats, the School of the Arts. And so I want to introduce Jane Behan and Marty Baker. Um, and if the, if the students would also come down, you can as well. Good evening, Dr. Lenker and board. And again, thank you for having us. Um, I actually want you all to know I have the best job in the district. <laughs> I mean, hands down, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, at the North Carolina Museum of Art in Raleigh from uh, October 2018 until this January 20th, a special exhibit features the painting, sculpture, and personal artifacts of the well-known American artist Georgia O'Keeffe. In her work, O'Keeffe explored themes such as flowers, still life, desert landscapes, and the interplay of realism and abstractism. <coughs> As an artist, her influence reaches beyond the art world and into our classrooms. Six schools from across North Carolina had student artwork selected by museum staff to showcase in this exhibit how students have interpreted O'Keeffe's art to inspire their own creativity. Two third grade students attending Walcoats Elementary School of the Arts had their work selected for display at this very honored exhibition in Raleigh. And uh, I will introduce now Mr. Paul Phillips, who is the art teacher at Walcoats. I actually have for y'all, I didn't know there was going to be 12 people, I got 10 of these. Uh, these are actually showing photos of the exhibit uh, plaque, and it's a close-up of their names featured up there, as well as pictures of their artwork framed and hanging in the museum, <coughs> and their work in the collection for the George O'Keefe exhibit. And I'll just, yep, yeah, thank you. And I actually have a few examples of some of the other students from Walcoats uh, of their work. So you can kind of see how they're working with watercolor uh, and collage. And then theirs were picked out of a, a selection of photographs that I actually sent to the North Carolina Museum. Theirs were personally picked by the folks at the North Carolina Museum of Art. So we couldn't be prouder. <laughs> Fantastic, great work. Now I'll invite Melinda Fagundes to make a presentation. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank the board for uh, 
this opportunity and to also say that as a school of the arts, this is but a fraction of the things that are going on at Walcoats. And uh, we're just so very proud of uh, Tameric and Zoshua um, and what they exemplify. Um, just as a reminder, in the Greenville Mall, we have a, a display uh, that changes out periodically in the Greenville Mall. We also have various displays in our local museums and galleries, um, and also in uh, some of the credit unions around town. Um, so um, but we appreciate everything that you've done to help us have the designation of the School of the Arts. So thank you. Thank you. Well, I just want to say that um, Walcoats is one of one of my two schools in my district, and I love going to your school because it's always everybody's having fun and they're pointing stuff out. And I went on a tour there back before the holidays, and one of the students was raving about Mr. Phillips. And there he is. There he is. <laughs> some of the artwork that he had done. So if you've never been to Walcoats, I would highly encourage you to go see what's going on at this school because it is phenomenal. Yeah. They just are doing so many really, really cool things. And so um, I encourage you to go visit, okay? So I'm also gonna present, let's see, it's Tameric? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, which one's Tameric? All right, Tameric, this is your medallion. And on behalf of the Pitt County Board of Education, we recognize Tameric Valentine for creating excellence in the East. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> and Joshua, here's your certificate. On behalf of the Board of Education, we proudly present that to you for excellence in the East. And here's your medallion. And tell me again, where's your where's your artwork? Is in in, in Raleigh? In Raleigh? Mm -hmm. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go look at it. I'm going to drive to Raleigh to see it. Okay? And when I do, I'll bring you a picture back that I took. Okay? Congratulations. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Are the parents here? Melinda. Awesome. Melinda. The parents are really good. Yeah. I'd like to welcome you for the picture as well. Yes. Get in the back. <laughs> 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 Mr. Baker. different presentation this time. Um, first of all, I want to say that child nu nutrition workers and our child nutrition department is extremely important, and so just take a moment to recognize them as some of the first faces that our students in Pitt County see, just like our bus drivers, but as they're feeding breakfast and um, meeting our students at lunch, um, they're extremely important, and we know that hungry children have a very difficult time learning, so we really appreciate what our child nutrition workers do, but we are actually on Honoring one of our child nutrition workers who competed at the state level as well. So I want to welcome um, our director, um, Gretchen Wilson, to um, present to um, Consuelo. Good evening. Um, I'm Gretchen Wilson, your child nutrition director, and I'm here today to um, tell you about our School Nutrition Association and about our award winner here in Pitt County Schools. Um, we have a professional group called School Nutrition Association. This in um, D.C. is our headquarters, and then we have a local chapter here in North Carolina. We go every year and send some of our staff members to go and compete and to get some education credits when they go up there. So Ms. Consuela right here is our lovely um, employee. She works for us from Pactola and she competes every year. She goes up there and 
puts this past year for the different um, items you tried to compete against. There are several different categories that we have at this conference that they can compete on. And she has taken home these major awards every year. She's got a bag back there of some other big glass projects. Miss <laughs> um, Valerie Lindsay is here with us tonight too to hold up some of her other ones that she got. So what we did is um, I wrote down here, so she, last summer she competed, this is always in June of every year, um, Miss Consuela Mattel competed um, for the School Nutrition Association Culinary and Creative Arts Show competition in North Carolina in the Greensburg Conference. She took home the first place complete ethnic plate and the second place in the commodity vegetable category. She took home the best of show, which is that lovely glass artwork right there, um, for her complete <laughs> school lunch and school breakfast. So there were several categories came in together and she got best of show for those lunch breakfast category plates. So she took those home and we were so proud of her for bringing us back to Pitt County Schools and to her Pactola School that she works at every day and we're just grateful to have her as part of our team. We're looking forward to this June also. She's already planning on more items to compete. There's a gentleman in Charlotte Mech that she wants to get back. Um, if, you, if you get the best of show a few years ago, the full one, the Ralph Eatman. Yeah, Ralph Eatman is the overall. There's um, six different total categories that meet up, and she wants to get it back. So that's her goal for this young lady. So, <laughs> so Ralph Eatman. Okay. But we're so honored to have Ms. Consuelo working for us for Pitt County Schools. That's awesome. Thank you. We're delighted to get this trip. We don't want y'all going anywhere yet. <laughs> um, we have over 3,000 employees that work for Pitt County Schools. And there's not one more important than the other. And that goes all the way from the superintendent all the way to the school bus drivers. And some of the most important individuals that we have cook our lunches and our meals for our students because a hungry child can't learn. And so it's very, very, very vital that we recognize those individuals that do such a tremendous job for us every day in our cafeteria. And Ms. Montiel, we want to thank you. you you've, uh, you've won before, won things before for us, and we really do appreciate you being a tremendous ambassador for Pitt County Schools. And I'm going to give you this certificate and this medallion with the understanding that you go back again and win some more things. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations very much. All right, and we're going to get a picture now. Let's, let's get us a picture. <laughs> Y'all sit down over here and I'll get a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Really, really is my favorite part of every movie. Um, there's so many great things happening. Um, we will now move along to public expression. We have one um, person with us tonight for public expression, so I'd like to invite um, Ms. Ekta Shaw to come address us. Um, Ms. Shaw, you have three minutes. Okay. Um, good evening, Pitt County Board of Education. I'm Ekta Shaw. I'm a sophomore at JHR's High School, and I'm also the chair of the Greenville Youth Council. The Youth Council was created on August 11, 2005 for high school students and currently has 15 students serving. The mission is to encourage youth to become more involved in the community and local government. In 2018, the Youth Council implemented many initiatives. One of them was the Letting Our Voices Be Heard Community Dialogue, which was held on Thursday, November 15th of 2018. This dialogue was designed to give youth a platform where they could share and discuss matters of the heart. The first dialogue presented students with an opportunity to discuss and share their concerns on three topics, schools out, home sweet home or not, and a different world. Since the first dialogue was so successful, we have decided to hold a second part focused on equity versus equality, home sweet home or not, and schools out, which covers matters such as mental health, peer pressure, colorism, gender bias, and sexual abuse. We would like to invite the Pitt County Board of Education to join us for the second part of the Letting Our Voices Be Heard dialogue. It will be held on January 28th from 5 to 7.30 on the third floor of the City Hall building. Thank you very much for this opportunity to speak and for your time, and we would look forward to seeing the board there to support the youth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate you being here and for uh, being willing to take a stand in your community. Thank you. 
Now moving on to the consent agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended? I move that we approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Caroline, seconded by Mary. All those in, or is there any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Get that camera. Okay. All right, motion passes. Um, now to new business. Um, we have two pol uh, a policy for first reading tonight. We have the first reading of revised policy 3410, uh, testing and assessment program. Um, board members should feel free to contact either uh, Ms. Hodson or Steve, Steve Lasseter prior to the February board meeting with any questions um, or concerns. Second item on new business is the first reading of the proposed 2019-2020 academic calendar. And board members should also feel free to contact Dr. Council prior to the February board meeting with any questions or concerns. Okay. So having gone through our new business, we are, are now to uh, comments by superintendent and board members. So, Just real quick, I would say um, over the holidays, you always get amazed at, at what people do. And um, you saw some of my notes, you saw that we had a water heater break mm -hmm. at one of our schools. Um, uh, all I do is, Matt, what do you know about it? Matt already had it worked out, problem being solved. I went out on uh, New Year's Day to, to just to drive through and look at it, and I think I scared the teachers to death when they saw me walking through the building. But teachers were out there working, getting them build their classrooms ready, and the only thing they could say was, "We'll be ready. We always are." The teachers and uh, the maintenance department always stepping up the plate, doing a great job. So I always thank Matt and his department, and we have the best teachers around. Thank you. Okay, so we'll start tonight with. Mr. Forrest. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I don't have very much to say other than uh, <laughs> very, very glad that we had the opportunity to adopt the recommendate, recommendation as far as the uh, building list of, uh, items that we will be bringing forward to the county commissioners with the understanding to the public that we've got $120 million worth of needs. I think that's correct. And uh, how much? 200 <laughs> just grew by 80 million. <laughs> and uh, so we have tremendous needs in Pitt County. We, uh, we just want the public to understand that and at the same time to recognize that we are working toward uh, remedying some of those. And this would be a first step toward uh, a second layer that we will be re recommending later on and then a third layer that we will be recommending even later on to try to cure some of these needs that we have in the county. Other than that, that's all I have. Thank you. Ms. Um, I'd like to just say that I feel I have felt very welcomed by the new members of the uh, school board. I've very much enjoyed working with y'all so far, and I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot. Um, over the holidays, or as the beginning of the school, uh, from the holidays, I was able to take a few tours of some of the schools along with Amy Cole, and I really enjoyed that experience. I'm very impressed by administrators that we have met and um, just getting a feel for some of the schools. Mr. Forbes. Um, I, I'm thankful that we had a overall safe holiday. We do need to remember the family who lost that child uh, and all of us celebrating there. So, you know, I know that they are, their hearts are broken as a result of, of that. Um, I know kids, uh, I had several uh, students up to me where I would see them in the mall or somewhere. I, I know I had two or three. Can you, can the board members give them another week? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, you know, the thing about that is I know your parents do not want another week. <laughs> so we are sending you back to school. <laughs> that uh, we continue to have a great year like we've had in the past. Sure. Um, I'd just like to congratulate the superstars we have that we saw tonight. Ms. Holloman um, at Hope Middle with the Quill with their, with their students. Um, Paul Phillips with his incredible um, artwork from his students from Walcoats. And then uh, Ms. Montiel with Child Nutrition out at Pactolas. These are examples of people doing everyday excellence that rises to the top 
in our state. And I bet if they competed nationally, we'd see national level honors as well. And that, that is what makes it such a privilege to, to work with and on behalf of Pitt County Schools. Oh, I, have, I don't have much to say, so I'll keep it short and sweet. But as Tracy already mentioned, you know, we did get a chance to tour some of the schools um, right before, actually, right after they started back. They were very, you know, the ones that we went to were very welcoming, considering it was the first day back after a long break. And they took us right in and showed us around and had no problems whatsoever. So I really enjoyed meeting them and working through. And I, I can't wait to see all the rest of the schools in the county. Uh, I would like to say congratulations to everyone that was here tonight that was recognized. And I cannot wait to go to Raleigh to see those paintings in person. That's going to be a, gr a great thing to do and t take some pictures. And, and then, I, of course, I'll go shopping afterwards. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't wait to see it because I think that, that is great. And that just kind of ties me to um, we need to be taking notes for next year's State Board of Education as because the goal of us that went this past year is to see Pitt County represented because we know that we have so many students and staff here that do excellent work and excellent things and we just want them to get recognized so I'm taking notes I hope the rest of you that got on that little train did too because um, I want to see us next year at that state board I want to see Pitt County people on the stage students I want to see their artwork and I want to see us recognized or them recognized for all the hard work that they do and that's all I have to say oh well, I'd just, just like to say happy new year everybody I'm glad everybody came back safe and you know from their vacations to holidays with their loved ones um, I had an opportunity to to uh, attend um, Damani Smith's funeral. As a matter of fact, her family um, and my family go back generations. Um, my grandma um, was a member of the church that she was buried in, and so was her mother and great-grandmother and everybody. So I've known them all my life, and um, I wish them, you know, a hedge of protection around them. Um, she was a beautiful little girl, a, I mean, a beautiful little girl. And we had other um, staff members to attend her service also that um, comforted the family uh, too. So I just wanted to make sure, you know, that um, we were represented at her, her service and it was beautiful. Um, I like to recognize um, Mr. Miller at Bethel School. Um, he sends out a, uh, an update um, through social media, and it was about the dress code and how parents should, you know, review their handbooks and make sure that, you know, they were buying clothes and following the guidelines for when students came back and got a lot of positive responses from that. Um, North Pitt Student Services um, under um, Miss State. Um, she has done an excellent job uh, promoting North Pitt on social media and making sure the students that are doing things are being recognized across the county. Um, also, Mr. Taylor, who's the head custodian at Bethel School, in the fall of um, 2018, he was recognized for being, um, but it happened over the holidays, right before we let out for Christmas. He was recognized for having the cleanest K-8 school in Pitt County. So I want to, um, you know, acknowledge those things. And that's it. Yeah, um, thank you. I'd just like to piggyback on what um, Benji said and, and Mary's comments earlier about the capital list that we had to priorita prioritize for the county commissioners. And there is so much need in Pitt County. Um, and we're almost in an impossible position here on the Board of Education. And so I just hope that everyone in Pitt County knows that all of our schools are priorities. And as we sit around this table, it is difficult to, to prioritize. And we really have to listen to what our maintenance and um, people like Matt and his group, because they know the highest needs that we have and the things that if we don't fix, they're gonna cost us even more. 
um, then putting another project ahead of that. So I just I wanted to emphasize that um, that every school is very important and it is a very difficult position to be in to have to prioritize those capital lists. However, if all of our taxpayers got together and wanted to send us two hundred million dollars, we'd be glad to knock <laughs> them all out. Um, but then, secondly, I just wanted to um, say about the child nutrition, um, Miss Consuelo, that won the award. Um, I don't know if the public understands the amount of regulation related to child nutrition in our schools and how impressive it really is for our child nutrition workers to do magic within so many boundaries that they have to serve food within and the amount of sugar that it can have in it and where they can buy it from and the amount of fat and things of that nature. So um, that really is um, something that's appreciated and that's something that our child nutrition workers do a fabulous job with and I just wanted to emphasize that. Thank you. Well, most everything has been covered, but I do feel like um, this list of projects bears one more, <laughs> one more set of comments, I guess. Um, just again, to thank you, Matt, and um, your team, and Dr. Linker, and for going, th going through this list and trying to figure out what to prioritize is painstaking at best, and it's, it's really, really hard. Um, and, and you're dealing with an ever-changing set of circumstances because what's a need today may, something may become a higher priority tomorrow, so it's ever-shifting. Um, and so I, like Ms. Flanagan, Ms. Flanagan and Mr. Forrest, I, I want to assure parents, um, community stakeholders, that we take this very seriously. When we hear about water leaking, when we hear about um, temperatures that are not controlled the way they should be, um, and those are some of the smaller issues. <laughs> um, when we hear those things, we don't take that lightly. And obviously, if we had the ability to, to take care of it all, we would. Um, we are thankful for the partnership that we have with our county commissioners. We are looking forward to their continued support and hopefully increased support in in these areas um, because it, it does take their support and um, in order to be able to make any of these things happen so thank you to those of you who've helped compile the list and continue to monitor the list um, and prioritize and we will do the best we can with what we're given I can assure you all of that and um, high school exams I believe start on Monday I think the four, yeah. so um, you know, high, most high schoolers are feeling some anxiety and some pressure right now and um, trying to get caught up. <laughs> so let's um, keep those high schoolers and their parents in, in your prayers um, because that's, it's a, uh, a tricky time. But I think we've gotten the year off to a great start thanks to the partnership of parents, students, teachers, just everybody. It, it truly, it's an overused phrase, but it truly does take a village. And so i um, grateful for everyone's support. So... That's all I have. If there's no further comment, do I hear? Move that we adjourn. <laughs> Did you get that, Carol? <laughs> okay. All those in favor of adjourning? Oh, we, uh, we don't. No, second, we don't have to vote on this. Second it. No. Okay. All in favor? Yeah, we do that. <laughs> we do. You were shaking your head. I'm like, yeah. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>